Hey, Heel Toe Corner Clubbers. Welcome to the Heel Toe Corner Club podcast. This is Marcus from Heel Toe Automotive. I am the president, owner, and founder of Heel Toe Automotive, an online shopping resource for Honda and Acura enthusiasts. We sell all kinds of different parts for all kinds of different Hondas and Acuras to fit your enthusiast needs. And you may hear that my audio is significantly better than it has been over the last, oh, I don't know, half a dozen podcasts. I've gone um, back and forth and up and down with this podcast, and I'm trying to hone in on um, a methodology that not only gives me an ability to be consistent, but have good quality. Uh, I don't know that I'm ever going to have amazing quality. I had a videographer friend with me for a while, as you may recall from earlier episodes, um, but he's had to move on to different projects. And um, as I've had to move on to different projects too, I've had to make this process a lot more simple for capturing podcasts. And uh, for a short time, the quality suffered. Uh, And we're clawing our way back. I got a new microphone, as you can probably hear uh, right now through your speakers. And I actually figured out how to increase the video quality on my podcast camera as well. So if you're watching on YouTube, you're probably getting the best experience possible for me to do at this time. Also, uh, during Cyber Week, I was trying to do, um, I guess it was Black Friday week. Cyber Week is the week after. But during that week, I podcast every single day in an effort to get myself in a habit of podcasting daily. I think that was a little bit of a stretch. Um, I don't know that podcasting daily is something that I actually really need to do. Um, And as it turns out, by the following week, I found it's not something I'm really fully capable of doing without putting a lot of concerted effort into it. Because the following week, I really didn't podcast very much. I think I only did three days. And I didn't even publish everything that I recorded. And here I am in the week after Cyber Week and I think this is my first one I'm recording. In my own defense, the new microphone caused me some technical difficulties, so I actually recorded two podcasts that I had to re-record to get to this one. So anyway, that's a little bit of rambling on about me and podcasting and this whole exercise, and uh, that's not really why I'm here today. Um, Why I'm here today is to bring you some, you know, maybe some helpful information about modifying your car and uh, something that comes up a lot and uh, I really need to address it. I don't think I'll be able to address every point of it in this podcast, but it's this issue of brake rotors and warping. Uh, It's really, really super common when you're driving your car and maybe doing enthusiastic driving, maybe you've had an emergency stop or something like that, that the car develops um, what's called a shimmy or shutter or vibration while you're braking. If you're finding that your car has a vibration while you're braking only, this is definitely a brakes issue. Uh, Sometimes people hunt for issues like axles or engine mounts or suspension bushings when they're getting a shimmy. That is appropriate, but not when you're braking. When you're braking, it's always going to be to do with the brakes. Now, conventional wisdom, most of our mechanics, the dealership, everybody, history, um, and, and like I said, just common knowledge, tribal knowledge, is that when you're getting shaking while you're braking, it's because your brake rotors have warped. Or maybe there's something wrong with your brake rotors, or maybe they're junky and garbage or something like that. I'm here to tell you that that is false news. That is not true. Um, the brake rotors don't warp. There are probably a, a, a micro section or sliver of issues that would actually result in brake rotors warping and it's not affecting you in your street car. It's probably not even affecting you in your track car. The reason why it's not warping is because if you just think about the material that a brake rotor is made out of and how it's designed, the front rotors, first of all, there's always going to be an issue with the front. If you're getting a shuddering like through the seat or through the body of the car while you're braking, that's almost always a rear rotor problem. Uh, I could talk about that in a different episode, but right now we're talking about the front because that's that shimmy that you feel in the steering and the floorboard in the front of the car. You know, the cowl might start shaking a little bit if it's really violent. You might feel a pulsation through the brake pedal. Uh, these are all mostly related to the front brakes. And the reason why it's the front brakes is because that's where most of the heat is generated. When uh, you hit the brakes on the car, the brake pads clamp onto the rotor. They provide a friction. Friction generates heat. 
and the heat is is the result of the friction slowing the kinetic energy of the spinning wheel. The uh, tires want to keep moving as they're gripping the road and the road is moving along underneath the car and they're providing this counter force. So really what the, what the friction of the brakes is doing is slowing the um, movement of the wheel as it's trying to fight to keep going against the road. Uh, so dissipating that energy it, it does generate quite a lot of heat. And what our brake rotor is designed to do is capture that heat, store it, and then shed it away. The brake rotors are vented um, on any modern car. They're, they're going to be vented. And that venting provides a cooling action that gets the heat away from the brake rotors so that you don't have them overheat and break and crack and, and such like that. Uh, but the material itself is extremely stable. It, it's designed to take the heat from braking, hold it, and get rid of it. If brake rotors were commonly warping, that would mean that there was uh, maybe a design problem or maybe they were uh, not made out of a good enough material. They would, they would have to reach a certain temperature that was super high and then cause them to, to get to a point of elasticity and then when they would recool, they would cool down in a different shape. I think that's what we think of when we think of this, this problem that's happening. But it's just not practical to think that way. The brake rotors are designed specifically to be a heat sink for the kinetic energy that converts into thermal energy with the braking of the car. The counterpoint to this is, you know, the, the, the technician or whoever gets in here and says, well, I've turned them. You know, you're you're flat out wrong. I've put a rotor in a lathe. I've done a quick way lathe on a car. I've turned them, and I've seen high spots and low spots and, and something that only could be on an out of true rotor. Well, I've seen that too. I, I've been a technician, at least a, a technician's apprentice, and I've done brake uh, rotor turning. And I've seen that also. And, you know, maybe there are some certain situations where you're going to have outliers where the brakes were overheated to a point where they would they would distort like that. But I'm going to tell you right now, if those brakes aren't purple, they didn't warp. Just think about it. The, the amount of heat that's required to actually distort the metal, it'd have to be glowing red hot. Um, and how would that not discolor? So if that rotor wasn't discolored, then you can explain to me how it was warped. It just, they don't get that hot. Okay, well... But what are the high spots? What's causing the shaking if it's not the rotors warping? It has everything to do with the brake pads, not the rotors themselves. The brake pads are actually the component that's generating the heat that's being taken on by the rotors. The brake pads get hot um, and they provide that frictional coefficient to cause the braking to happen in the first place. Part of what makes the brake pads work the way that they do is when they get to a certain temperature during the bedding in process, they'll break down a little bit on the mating surface face and put a coating or transfer layer as it's called on the face of the rotor. This transfer layer is important because it actually helps the brake pad mate to the rotor surface really well. It will grip itself better than it grips just bare metal. And uh, so whenever you need to do a braking event, that transfer layer helps the brake pads bite in and stop the car. If you had to brake with fresh, clean, bare metal rotors every single time, it actually wouldn't brake very well at all. And you'll know this if you've ever put new brake pads and rotors in a car. The first time you go out and drive it, braking isn't all that good until you get them heated up a little bit and then they cool down and then your braking starts working really pretty well. That's the transfer layer at work. The key to putting the transfer layer onto the rotor is to get the brake pads up to a brake in or bedding temperature. Now, whatever temperature that is depends on the brake pad compound that you have. Brake pad to brake pad to brake pad, it's gonna be a little bit different. The point is you're gonna heat them up and generate that transfer layer. Okay, we're still not at the shaking yet, but we're getting there. If you understand the concept of the transfer layer, then you probably understand the concept of the brake pad breaking down 
and providing that transfer layer on the face of the rotor and that the face of the rotor now is no longer flat necessarily speaking. It's not warped, of course. It's not uh, having a lot of run out, but it is the type of run out that you could measure under a microscope the transfer layer that's there. When you have a brake pad in the vehicle that you're consistently reaching that bedding in or transfer layer temperature, you're going to continually build up that transfer layer and you're not going to build it up evenly. As it builds, it's going to get more and more uneven as you go. And unfortunately, a lot of brake pads, they'll just start building on themselves. This transfer layer is going to get way out of whack. You'll end up with really high spots and some spots that are low. You'll end up with some spots that have a higher coefficient of friction and some spots that have a lower coefficient of friction. And as the brake pads, when you apply the brakes, contact these high and low spots and high and low friction spots, that's where this pulsation is coming from. That's right, the brake rotors aren't worked. It's a transfer layer causing this uneven situation on the face of the rotor. Why does it happen? Well, it happens because oftentimes the brake pads that are installed in the car from the factory or from the previous owner or whatever just aren't really matching your driving style and the weight of the car and you know the amount of braking that you're doing. Sometimes people put more heat in the brakes than other times. And if your brake pads aren't matching the other scenarios, like the other variables of the weight of the vehicle, the way you drive the car, your normal driving routine, then you're going to end up overheating the brakes through no fault of your own just by driving the car normally, like normally for yourself. I'll give you an example. If you live on a hill, that means you're coming down that hill every time you leave your house to go wherever you need to go. And every time you come down that hill, you're building up heat in the brakes. Well, long hills, especially if you have an automatic transmission car, you're kind of riding the brakes most of the way down. At a certain point, you start getting some shaking or some degradation in your braking, and it doesn't feel very good. Uh, good drivers will downshift into a lower gear and help the engine braking down the hill. You'll notice, though, that that uh, difficulty with braking or that unsmoothness and braking usually clears itself up after you've driven around town for a little while or come off the highway and done a braking event. This is because the brake pads were getting a little hot, you were experiencing a little bit of fade, and that transfer layer was getting a little out of control. When you go drive the car normally, and especially if you get up to highway speed and do a braking event to slow yourself down when you get off an exit, you're going to reheat the brakes but in a more smooth and consistent fashion clear away that transfer layer buildup that you had. Um, but, you know, the next time you go down that hill, you're just going to build it up again. So you, you may experience some inconsistent braking if you're the type of person that lives on a hill and heat up the brakes every single day you leave your house. That's a common story that I hear. So what do you do to combat this? Well, the engineers who design brake pads and the ones who pick which brake pads go on your car from the factory are trying to select a brake pad that's going to work for most people in most situations. And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably have a Honda car. Honda is extremely conservative with the brake pad compounds they install in their vehicles from the factory. We all are enthusiast drivers. Most of us like to drive kind of sporty. The cars encourage us to. The powertrains work great. The chassis work great. The tires from the factory are probably pretty lame. We've probably upgraded them. But if we haven't done anything with the brake pads, those brake pads aren't really fitting with our driving style. Um, the brake pads that they choose are more for an average driver or a below enthusiastic driver who's just sort of driving around town and never really has higher heat braking events. And ever since I was a little kid, my folks uh, back in you know, 1990, 1991 um, have had Honda Civics and brake rotor warping, as so it was called, plagued even those old Civics that they had, um, you know, when I was like 13 years old, 12 years old. They've always done it. They've always put brake pads in cars that are 
designed to be quiet and low dusting and unobtrusive to the driving experience in terms of it being from an NVH perspective. But uh, ironically, as soon as you start driving the car, and I mean an average driver has no problem generating enough heat to cause irregular breakdown of the brake pads and then they'll create an inconsistent transfer layer. And the factory's done a really poor job of educating the dealers or even admitting themselves that different brake pads are needed. The car's gotta go back into the dealer. The dealer will turn or replace the rotors. They'll put new brake pads in and it'll brake great for now until six, eight months down the line when that shaking creeps back in again as the transfer layer incrementally gets out of control over time. It might be a short amount of time, it might be a long amount of time, but eventually somebody's complaining about their brakes again and this vibration and damn it, my rotor's warped again. Well, all you gotta do is experience that once or twice, go to the aftermarket, get a set of brake pads that works better, Hawk HPS pad, EBC green stuff, maybe it is, or uh, StopTech street touring or sport pads, any kind of brake pad that's actually a higher grade of material. And I don't want to mean higher grade in terms of quality, just able to withstand higher braking temperatures will open up that temperature range window to allow you to do your normal driving without destroying the rotors by putting an uneven transfer layer on the rotor. It doesn't take a whole lot, but that's what it takes. Just a different set of brake pads than what the factory specified. Not everybody's gonna have this issue. Not every single Honda is plagued with this issue. I had mentioned this on the forums at one point and um, somebody said, well, my S2000 doesn't have this issue. And I'm using OEM brake pads. Man, do you know how many different brake compounds there are available for the S2000? as they incrementally changed the spec of pad over time. Many of the Honda vehicles have had superseded pad part numbers where it used to take this part number and then it bumps to another part number. And why do they do this? Well, it could be a change in manufacturer, but oftentimes it's a change in the brake pad compound as they continually try to change compounds and get in front of the issue so that the very minimum amount of people incur encounter this uh, warping quote unquote concern but ultimately, that's what you need. You need new brake pads. You really don't even need new rotors. And most of the time, you don't even need to resurface your rotors. If you're experiencing this shimmy today, all you really need to do is put in a higher grade of brake pad, go out, rebed the brakes again. You'll clear up the transfer layer that was there from the old weaker pads and install a new transfer layer from the new pads. The braking will be smoother and you should experience a better overall driving experience over the long term. You may experience a little more dust. This is because part of the compromise that causes the brake pads to break down prematurely makes those brake pads a little less resilient. And while they do stop the car, they don't stop the car amazingly well. Um, a more resilient compound that's less prone to breaking down will wear the rotor a little bit more and you'll get a little bit more brake dust build up on the wheels. Spoiler alert on a future podcast, the brake dust on your wheels oftentimes isn't from the pads. It's from rotor material wearing away. So there you have it. That's quite a lot about the brake rotor warping myth and what you can do to solve it. And I am positive that people will have exception with me calling it a myth, but it absolutely is. Such a fractionally small percentage of you are warping rotors that it's practically zero. You will discolor, distort, put hot spots, crack, put surface cracks, all kinds of things to a rotor long before you actually warp it. All right, well, thank you very much for listening. Again, this is Heel Toe Automotive. And if you have any question about which brake pads you should be using in your car, you could go ahead and leave us a message in the comments below. Call or text us. Reach us uh, through our website. However you wish, we're here to help. Heel Toe is in your corner. Have a fantastic day.